Greetings, and we're live. How are you guys doing today? Good morning, good to see you. I'm back with another video. Um, I apologize. Uh, there's been a schedule change in um, my work schedule, so from now on we're doing uh, uh, different days that I'll be, uh, that I'll be um, giving these messages. Anyway, let's, let's begin. As always, we start with the Soul Stirring Songs and Hymn Book. And we're going to be uh, singing um, number 232 today, Tell Me the Story of Jesus. Good to see you. Let's sing for Jesus. It doesn't really matter if you could sing very good or not. As long as you're singing for Jesus and praising God, that's what makes the difference. So here we go. Tell me the story of Jesus, 232. Tell me the story of Jesus, write on my heart every word. Tell me the story most precious, sweetest that ever was heard. Tell how the angels in chorus sang as they welcomed his birth. Glory to God in the highest, peace and good tidings on earth. Tell me the story of Jesus, write on my heart every word. Tell me the story most precious, sweetest that ever was heard. Fasting alone in the desert, tell of the days that are past. How for our sins he was tempted, yet was triumphant at last. Tell of the years of his labor, tell of the sorrow he bore. He was despised and afflicted, homeless, rejected, and poor. Tell me the story of Jesus, write on my heart every word. Tell me the story most precious, sweetest that ever was heard. Tell of the cross where they nailed him, writhing in anguish and pain. Tell of the grave where they laid him, tell how he liveth again. Love in that story so tender, clearer than ever I see. Stay, let me weep while you whisper, love paid the ransom for me. Tell me the story of Jesus, write on my heart every word. Tell me the story most precious, sweetest that ever was heard. Amen. Amen. The story of Jesus really is the sweetest story we're ever going to hear in our lives. Our opening reading is from uh, the Old Testament, the prophet Isaiah chapter 61, if you want to read along in the King James Bible. We're going to read verses 1 through 9. Isaiah 61, 1 through 9. The Bible says, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach. Good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn to Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. And they shall build the old wastes, they shall raise up the former desolations, and they shall repair the waste cities, the desolations of many generations. And the strangers shall stand and feed your flocks, and the sons of the aliens shall be your plowmen, and your vindressers, 
but ye shall be named the priests of the Lord. Men shall call you ministers of our God. Ye shall eat the riches of the Gentiles, and in their glory shall ye boast yourselves. The word of the Lord. We'll stop there. Greetings, friends and colleagues. It's Sean Elvis. My brothers and sisters, in today's video, we're continuing our series, A Closer Walk With Thee, where we're going through the life of Jesus um, backwards. <laughs> but like I said, uh, we're going backwards um, because I want to end on Christmas Day with the birth of Jesus. So anyways, today we're going to be looking at Jesus in the Old Testament, in the Old Testament. Now I want to preface this message by saying this. Salvation, the path to heaven, the path to eternal life in the Old Testament before Jesus Christ was born was the same. It was by grace through faith. It has always been that by grace through faith in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. Some people make the mistake or they have the misunderstanding or they're misguided and they believe that in the Old Testament um, people had to do sacrifices. They had to do animal sacrifices to be saved or they had to obey the commandments of the law of Moses to be saved. Excuse me. There's still some people who make this mistake today. In the New Testament, they believe that you have to go to church to be saved, or you have to read your Bible, or you have to get baptized, or you have to repent of your sins, or feel sorry for your sins, or turn away from your sins, or uh, stop living a sinful lifestyle, whatever the case is. Now, that's not my sermon today. Um, I just wanted to preface this message today by reminding everybody that um, because we're going to go back and look at some Old Testament scriptures, and I, I just don't want people to make the mistake of, of believing that salvation was different in the Old Testament as it is today. Um, the only difference is back then, before Jesus came, before Jesus was born uh, in the flesh, is people were looking forwards to the, uh, to the future. Um, the Messiah was going to come, right? Whereas now in the New Testament, uh, the time period we're living in, we're looking backwards. We believe that the Messiah already came. Jesus already uh, lived. He already um, accomplished his work. So um, for today's sermon, if you could imagine, just erase your mind, everything you know about Jesus. For uh, I know it's impossible, but um, just pretend or imagine um, that you're looking forwards. You're looking for this future king, this future savior who's going to come one day. And, um, and with that, let's just jump right into the message today. Um, in today's message, we're going to be looking at some Old Testament scriptures. Or actually, we're going to be looking at some New Testament scriptures to prove that Jesus was talked about and prophesied in the Old Testament. And we're going to see how uh, Jesus talked about this and the apostles themselves talked about this. They understood how in the Old Testament... Jesus was pictured, Jesus was symbolized, Jesus was talked about, he was prophesied about. Um, he was foretold that he would come in the future. So there's many stories in the Bible, throughout the Bible, and, and one of the challenges of us as, as, uh, as Christians, as disciples of Jesus, if you will, is that when we read the scriptures, let me get my Bible, um, and we're going to be in Luke, so if you want to open up to Luke, um, uh, what was I saying? Uh, as disciples of Jesus, when we read the scriptures, um, we have to decide, you know, is this story uh, uh, supposed to be taken literally? Or is it, does it, sim does it symbolize something greater than, what, than what's um, actually being talked about? Is this a literal interpretation or is it both? So in, in the context of this sermon, we have to uh, um, make the determination, is this, is this Old Testament scripture talking about Jesus? Or is it, uh, is it just um, talking about something right now that's happening um, at that time period when it was written? Or is it both? It could be both. Now, part of what makes J Jesus Christ such a credible person in history is the fact that he fulfilled so many prophecies that were written hundreds of years before his time. Jesus was spoken about hundreds, if not thousands of years before he existed, before he was born. Now you can do uh, your own study. We're not going to study all the prophecies uh, in this sermon um, that Jesus fulfilled. But 
uh, for one example, the opening reading we read in Isaiah 61. That's just one example of a prophecy that Jesus has filled, and we're going to look at that in Luke chapter 4. So if you haven't found Isaiah chapter 61, go ahead and find Isaiah 61. Hold your place there, and then uh, also find Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4. And we're going to compare these two scriptures, and we're going to see if we can find Jesus in the Old Testament. <clears throat> While you're finding those scriptures, I'll read for you John 5, 39. John, for, John 5, 39. Jesus says, Search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. Jesus is saying, hey, look. You think that you could uh, find eternal life in reading the Bible. But no, the Bible is just pointing you to me, and I'm the one who's going to give you eternal life. They are, the scriptures testify of Jesus. This is just the testimony. Now, Jesus himself said that the scriptures, the Bible, testifies of Jesus. That means they talk about him, right? The Old Testament is what he's referring to when he says the scriptures uh, that he means the Old Testament. See, back in the Old Testament time, uh, Jesus was um, Jesus was a Jew. He was of the tribe of Judah, and he was a rabbi. He was a he was a teacher of the Bible. And um, basically, <laughs> they didn't have the New Testament, so he's a teacher of the Old Testament, right? He's a teacher of the the Scriptures. Now, what does the Scriptures mean? Well, in the old times, um, the Scriptures were. Uh, written in Hebrew, right? The original Old Testament is written in Hebrew on, on scrolls. They didn't have books like this. Um, they had scrolls, and they had three main sections of the Old Testament. You had the Torah, which was the books of the law, or the five first books of the Bible, Genesis, Exodus, Exodus Leviticus, uh, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. And then you had the prophets, which were made up of um, uh, like Joshua, Samuel, Kings and, and some of the minor prophets and, and there's some other ones I I, <laughs> I can't list them all right now but um, basically you had the Torah the law the prophets and you had the writings the writings were made up of mostly Psalms and Proverbs and then uh, you had um, like Job and, and Ecclesiastes and, and some, some other books but um, a lot of the times when Jesus talks about the Old Testament or when the New Testament refers to the Old Testament they'll refer to it as the Scriptures. Or they'll refer to a specific part of the scriptures, um, and they'll call uh, the prophets, or or um, they'll say the law. Um, in this case, Jesus is referring to the scriptures in, in John 5.39, and he says the Old Testament, the scriptures, testify of him. So Jesus is making the claim that, hey, the Old Testament, the scriptures testify of him, of me. Now, did you find Luke chapter 4? Luke chapter 4. Let's see if we can see Jesus in the Old Testament here. Let's see how the prophet Isaiah um, testified of Jesus. Luke chapter 4. We're going to start in verse 16. The Bible says, And he came to Nazareth, talking about Jesus, where he had been brought up. And as his, and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. So Jesus is reading from the Bible in, in, uh, at church. And, and there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah, uh, also known as Isaiah, same, uh, same reference. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. <clears throat> Verse 18, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering sight to the blind, and set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book, and he gave it again to the minister, and sat down, and the eyes of them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say to them, This day is the scripture fulfilled in your ears. Jesus told everybody there at church that day, he said, hey, I'm the person who Isaiah was talking about here. Isaiah prophesied that this day would come, and this day is here right now. It just happened. That was Jesus. Now let's look back at Isaiah again and see if we can see this. Um, going back to Isaiah chapter 61. 
Uh, let's look at verse 1 and 2. This is the scripture Jesus read. He said, The Spirit of the Lord of God is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn. Now I believe that when the prophet Isaiah wrote this, he was anointed by God. He was filled with the Holy Ghost. He was um, preaching the word of God, right? So, Sure, of course. Um, but for the first time ever in history, when Jesus read this, and he claimed that, hey, this scripture is fulfilled. Jesus was claiming that, hey, the Old Testament was referring to him, to Jesus. And that's never been heard before. So the people were kind of astonished at what he was talking about. They were amazed. Now this passage, um, I also want to point out this passage here. If you look at uh, Isaiah 61, verses, um, verses 1 uh, that second part, it says, Because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. And then if you compare that to look, Luke 4, uh, verses 8, uh, Luke 4, 18, uh, Jesus says, Because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. So I just wanted to point out that the word gospel just means good tidings or or good news, right? A lot of people don't know what the word gospel means. It just means good news. Hey, I'm here. Jesus came to give us good news. Hey, I have good news for you guys. I haven't abandoned you yet. <laughs> anyway, uh, um, I'm here. Anyway, all right. Now, um, so the prophet. Back to my back to my sermon. Now, the prophet Isaiah um, also had good news for the people, right? So like I said, we have to determine, was this, is this referring to Jesus or is this referring to um, what Isaiah is going through at this point in time or is it both, right? I, I would contend that it's both here because Isaiah was anointed by God to preach the good news to the people of Israel of his day because their enemies were coming in to take over and, and he said, hey, God's not going to abandon us. God's still with us. He's eventually going to restore our kingdom of Israel here our nation, and um, that was a physical nation. But in the New Testament, Jesus says, hey, I have good news for you now. I've been anointed by God. I am actually the anointed one by God here to give you better news, the real good news, um, salvation through me. Jesus approached it more of at a spiritual restoration, right? Uh, your soul is going to be restored and saved and, and delivered from hell. Now, um, Let's, let's uh, go forward to Luke chapter 24. So we're going from 4 to 24. Luke chapter 24. And while you're turning there, and I'm turning there, <laughs> I'll read uh, John 5, 45. John 5, 45 says, Do not think that I will accuse you to the Father. There is one that accuseth you, even Moses, in whom ye trust. For had ye believed Moses... Ye would have believed me, for he wrote of me. But if you believe not his writings, how shall you believe my words? Again, Jesus is saying, look, even the prophet Moses, way back in the Old Testament, way back in Genesis Exodus, and Exodus, um, the first books of the Bible talked about me, Right? Jesus himself, he understood and believed that the Old Testament contained references about Jesus, about himself. About how he would be born of a virgin, about how he would um, die for the sins of the whole world, about how he would live a sinless life, about how he would be resurrected from the dead and ascend into heaven and then one day return back here to this earth. That's all throughout the Old Testament from Moses all the way to Malachi, Genesis to Malachi. Um, and like I said, we're not going to do an in-depth study of the prophecies that Jesus fulfilled, but I just wanted to point out that Jesus believed this, right? He believed that when you go back to the Old Testament, um, that it talks about him. So let's look at Luke chapter 24, and, and we're going to start in verse 13, and this is the famous um, passage uh, called the Walk to Emmaus or the Road to Emmaus. Um, because they're walking on a road to Emmaus. Um, anyways, uh, what's happening is, well, let's read it. Let's read it, and then uh, we'll discuss it. 
Uh, Luke 24, verse 13, And behold, two of them went that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem, about three score uh, furlongs. And they walked together of all these things which had happened. And they, and they talked, excuse me, and they talked together of all these things which had, had happened. And it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were holden that they should not know him. Look at verse 16 there. Their eyes were holden that they should not know him. What does that mean? That means basically they were talking to Jesus, but they didn't recognize him. They didn't recognize him. That, hey, this is this is the guy who died and resurrected from the dead. It hadn't registered in their in their mind yet who Jesus was, the Messiah, right? And sometimes we can read in the Old Testament uh, stories and scriptures and passages, and we couldn't, and we might not recognize Jesus ourselves because our eyes are just we're we're fixed on the physical world. We're not seeing. The spiritual, um, we're not seeing the prophecies. We're not seeing Jesus, but he's there. Let's continue reading verse 17. And he said unto them, so Jesus is speaking, What manner of communication are, are, are these that ye have one to another as ye walk and are sad? And, and the one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered, said unto him, Art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem? Has not that... And, and has not known the things which are come to pass there in these days? And he said unto them, What things? So Jesus is kind of, uh, he's kind of playing dumb with them. He's saying, What are you guys talking about, man? We, I haven't heard of no Jesus resurrected. <laughs> um, it, anyway, he's kind of poking fun at him a little bit. Anyway, um, verse 19, And they said unto him concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet, mighty in, indeed in word before, before God and all the people. And now the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have crucified him. But we trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel. And beside all, and beside all this, today is the third day since these things were done. Yea, and a certain women also of our company made us astonished, which were early at the sepulcher. And when they found not his body, they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels, which said that he is alive. And certain of them which were with us went to the sepulcher and found it even so, as the women had said, but him they saw not. So basically they're explaining to Jesus that, hey, uh, Jesus was, he, he, we, we thought when he was alive that he was the Messiah, but then he was crucified, they killed him, they buried him. And so we were like, what's going on? And then three days later has, three days later has passed and now it's the third day that they're uh, talking about this. They're saying uh, Mary uh, found Jesus, and she said the angels testified that he's alive. And we went over there, and, and there, we couldn't find the body, right? So they're explaining to Jesus, hey, this is what happened. And this next part is really interesting. Uh, watch how Jesus rebukes them for not seeing him, for not understanding that, hey, you guys didn't understand that the Old Testament, that I was there, that this was going to happen. Look at uh, verse 25. And he said unto them, this is Jesus rebuking them, fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory? So Jesus rebukes them for not understanding that, hey, you guys read the Old Testament. You read the prophets. You've read what was prophesied about me and you still didn't understand you fools, right? So Jesus uh, is rebuking them for not seeing Jesus in the Old Testament. Jesus is like, why don't you guys understand? You know, you, you, you go to church, you read the Bible, you should understand this. And so he goes on to explain to them the Old Testament um, and explain to them, hey, look, this is what Moses was meant when he was talking about this. This is a picture of me. So in this series um, that I'm going through, over the life of Christ, I want you to understand that Jesus isn't just found in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Um, so if I reference an Old Testament scripture, I'm referencing G I could be referencing, referencing Jesus. Um, we're mostly going to be talking about the Gospels, but I'm just saying Jesus is in the Old Testament. He's not just in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. 
he's found throughout the entire Old Testament. Now let's look at verse 26, and i got to hurry. Um, verse 26, where are we? Verse 27, and, and beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Read that again. Beginning at Moses, the very beginning of the Bible, all throughout the scriptures, uh, the prophets, all the prophets. So that's Samuel, Joshua, uh, Ezekiel, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Daniel. All the prophets spoke of him and he expounded, hey, this is what they were talking about. You guys didn't see me in the prophets. So Jesus is there in the prophets and in all the scriptures, all the scriptures. So throughout the entire Old Testament, he's saying, hey, this is me. This is me. You guys didn't see me. In the Old Testament, so Jesus goes back, explains to him, and the point I'm trying to make here um, that I'm trying to drive home is is just don't get stuck on the New Testament. You know, we should always go back to the Old Testament and look for Jesus there because he's there throughout all the scriptures, throughout all the prophets from Moses onward, right? So we need, and, and also I want to say this, we need to look for Jesus in our lives, okay? Jesus is all He's in your life. He's in your heart. If you're saved, you believe in Jesus. He can the Holy Spirit lives inside of you. And and you know those things in your life that seem to happen for uh, like a coincidence? They don't happen just by coincidence or 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 or, or accident. That's Jesus working in your life. You know, things don't just happen for any reason. And you need to look for Jesus in your life, just like you need to look for Jesus in the scriptures, because he could be very well standing right next to you and you not recognize him, right? So um, that's what I'm saying. Don't just look for Jesus in the Old Te- in the New Testament, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. It's incredible when you go back to the Old Testament and you see Jesus there. Now, um, man, I got so many verses to go through. Uh, let's, let's go to Acts chapter 1, or excuse me, Acts chapter 2, Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2 and all throughout the Bible, um, or excuse me, all throughout, well, yeah, all throughout the New Testament, but but specifically throughout Acts, the book of Acts, um, the apostles uh, talk about and they uh, make it known that they believe that Jesus was in the Old Testament as well. So we've already seen that Jesus believed that he was in the Old Testament. So let's look at what the apostles believe. Do they also believe this? Um I hope my Bible's... I need a new Bible. Anyway, uh, so Acts chapter 2, I want to look at a passage here where the Apostle Peter is using the Old Testament to preach to the Jewish people about Jesus. Now, he's trying to explain to them how this wasn't just some random incident, what happened, Jesus uh, dying and resurrecting from the dead, um, but it was actually prophesied long before in the Old Testament. Now, uh, we're not going to read all of Acts and all these verses because for the sake of time, but um, Acts uh, chapter 2, verse 16 says, But this is what, uh, Acts 2, 16 says, But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. So that's a prophet in the Old Testament. It's the book of the Old Testament. And it shall come to pass, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Now I'm going to stop there, um, but just look at verse 16. Um, uh, the Apostle Peter is explaining to everybody, hey, this was spoken about about the prophet Joel. You know, what Jesus, what, what happened here with Jesus was, was already talked about by the prophet Joel. He already saw it coming. Let's skip down to verse 25. Acts chapter 2 verse 25 says, For David speaketh concerning him. So King David spoketh concerning Jesus. I foresaw the Lord. He foresaw it. He saw it. He prophesied for it. That the Lord always before my face, for he is on my right hand, that I should not be moved. Uh, He's quoting uh, King David in the book of Psalms. Right there. Um, which is, which is prophesying about Jesus. Uh, let's look at uh, verse 31. Acts chapter 2, verse 31. 
he, seen this before, spake of the resurrection of Christ. So still talking about Jesus, or excuse me, King David talking about Jesus in the Old Testament, that his soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption. Another quote from uh, the Old Testament Psalm. Um, let's look at, uh, let's go, I'll, I'll, he, he goes on to keep preaching this sermon. And like I said, I'm running out of time, so uh, let's shoot over to Acts chapter 3, verses 18. But those things which God before hath showed by the mouth of all his prophets that Christ should suffer, he hath so fulfilled. So Jesus Christ was talked about, if you, uh, if you read here in uh, 3.18, it says all his prophets. Every prophet of the Old Testament testified and talked about Jesus. And, prophes and prophecies that Jesus was going to fulfill in the future. Now let's look at verse 21. Um, verses 21, Acts chapter 3. Whom the heaven must receive until the time of restitution of all things which God hath spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. All his holy prophets. Look at verse 22. For Moses truly said unto the fathers, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren like unto me. Him shall ye hear in all things whatsoever he shall say unto you. And it shall come to pass that every soul which, not, which will not hear the prophet shall be destroyed from among the people. Yea, and all the prophets from Samuel and those that follow after, as many as have spoken, have likewise foretold of these days. So he's talking about, hey, King David talked about it. Moses talked about it. Samuel talked about it. Joel talked about it. All the prophets prophesied of Jesus. You see in the, you see in the pattern here? These guys are pointing backwards to the Old Testament saying, hey, look for Jesus in the Old Testament because he's there. Now, I'm going to skip this next part for the sake of time, but... Um, I just wanted to point out how amazing it is. You know, we can go on chapter, uh, we can go on Acts chapter four, chapter five, chapter six, chapter seven. You get the point, right? Um, Jesus and the apostles believe that Jesus is in the Old Testament. He was the Messiah prophesied. Now, one thing I uh, I do want to look at here. I don't want to skip that part. Let's go to Acts chapter four. Acts chapter, is it Acts chapter 4? Hold on. Yeah, let's go to Acts chapter 4. Why not? Let's go to Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4, verse 10. Acts chapter 4, verse 10 says, Be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. This is the stone which was set at naught of your builders, which has become the head of the, cor uh, uh, of the corner. So he's talking about Jesus Christ in the Old Testament. And what I wanted to point out here is that remember when Jesus was hanging on the cross? He was also quoting Psalms. Like right here, uh, the Apostle Peter is quoting Psalms. Trying to explain to people, hey, see, see this psalm? This uh, is a prophecy of Jesus that Jesus fulfilled. And remember when Jesus was hanging on the cross, um, he quoted psalms as well, Psalm 118. And, um, which is another example of Jesus in the Old Testament being prophesied that he would die on the cross. Right. So while he's hanging on the cross, he's quoting the Old Testament scripture of uh, of the prophecy that he would be hanging on the cross. It's it's crazy. But anyway, let's look at, um, let's go to uh, Acts chapter 5, verse 42. And I'll try to breeze through this as fast as I can. Uh, we're almost done. Acts chapter 5, verse 42, the last verse says, And daily in the temple and in every house they ceased not to teach and preach Jesus Christ. Why do I preach out of the Old Testament? Because in, in, the, in, in, in the New Testament here, the apostles always went back to the Old Testament and said, look, this is Jesus, right? This is what we talked about. This is what they teach and they preach. They, they teach and preach Jesus Christ and Jesus is in the Old Testament. And another thing I wanted to mention here is, 
is Jesus Christ is not a name, right? Jesus is the name of Jesus. Christ is a title. So um, basically, th uh, this verse is saying they ceased uh, not to teach and preach Jesus Christ, meaning they teach that Jesus was the Christ. Now, the Christ is a title uh, given to uh, this, this um, specific person that the Old Testament prophets prophesied would come. They prophesied, hey, in the future, there will be a Christ. There will be a Messiah, somebody to save us, somebody to uh, preach the gospel to us, somebody to restore the nation of Israel. So here in Acts chapter 5, verse 42, what, what the apostles are doing is, they, is they're ceasing not to teach and preach that Jesus was the Messiah talked about in the Old Testament. Let's go to Acts chapter 10, Acts chapter 10, verse 42. Kind of skipping a few. That's okay. Acts chapter 10 verse 42 says, And he commanded us to preach unto the people and to testify that it is he which was ordained by God to be the judge of, uh, to be the judge of quick and dead. See, all the prophets gave witness, the Bible says. Or excuse me, we need to read verse 43. Uh, to give all the prophets witness that through his name, whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins. In Acts chapter 10 verse 43 here it says, all the prophets gave witness. Okay, that means Moses all the way through the prophets of Malachi gave witness to Jesus that uh, whosoever believeth in him, salvation is by grace through faith. Not of works, lest any man should boast, the Bible says. But friends, I could go on and on with examples, but for the sake of time, I'm going to stop there. My basic point, I think you understand, is that if we're going to have a closer walk with Jesus, if we want to understand the mind of Christ, what he did for us, that we, um, and if we want to serve him better, we need to include the Old Testament to get a full picture of Jesus, not just the New Testament. We need to include all the books of the Bible, all the prophets, not just the Gospels and the New Testament. But if you want a clear picture of Jesus, you need to go back to the Old Testament and see him there. That's my message for the day, guys. Um, let's, let's look back in history. Let's look back at the Old Testament. Let's understand Jesus because I'll tell you this. Jesus is coming again. Okay, He came the first time in the flesh, but he's coming back again. And I've said this before, the second time he's not coming in as, as a lamb, he's coming as a lion. But, you know, just like back in the Old Testament, people were blindsided when Jesus was there. They didn't understand, hey, this is Jesus. They didn't recognize him when he showed up. Now, we don't want to make the mistake of not recognizing Jesus when he comes again in the future. Because uh, when Jesus returns, and he will return, he said he's coming back um, but before that, he said there, there's going to be a false uh, Christ. There's going to be an antichrist who comes before, a counterfeit, if you will, to try to deceive people. And he will deceive people who don't recognize Jesus. So if we want to recognize Jesus when he comes back, we need to go back in the Old Testament. We need to understand history so that we don't repeat history. We don't make the mistakes that they did by not um, recognizing Jesus and they ended up crucifying him, right? So it's important. It's important that we uh, don't just um, look at look for Jesus in the New Testament, that we go back in the Old Testament and see him there so we can get a full understanding of who Jesus is so when he comes the second time. Anyway, that's my message for the day, guys. Um, let's let's get a closer let's get a closer walk with Jesus by recognizing him throughout the entire Old and New Testament. I hope you guys uh, understood that point. Um, God bless you guys. God bless this message. Thank you for listening. And as always, um, we're going to close in prayer. And I'll give God the last word, of course, as always. And we're going to be in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 for that, if you want to read along. Um, but uh, thanks for listening. God bless. And let's bow in prayer. <clears throat> oh, man. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for... Your love, Father, thank you so much for this message. Thank you for showing us and revealing us your son Jesus to us. Um, uh, it would have been difficult, Lord, if we didn't know about Jesus and to go back and see you um, in the Old Testament. But now we do. We can look back and we could get a, uh, a clearer picture of you, Lord. And we thank you for that, that you loved us so much.
that you gave Jesus to us to die for us, Lord. Um, it's truly remarkable and extraordinary, and, and it's a miracle, Father, that, that you were able to predict everything that you were going to do and how you orchestrated everything perfectly. You planned it to perfection, Lord. You didn't, you didn't miss one, uh, one beat throughout all history using different prophets and different situations and different stories to help us uh, get an understanding of Jesus, to get us uh, a clear picture of you, Lord, and what you're trying to do for us and show us your love for us. Lord, sometimes we, um, we, we don't understand, we don't recognize you in our own lives, Lord, things that go on in our lives. And Lord, I ask that you help us uh, get a clear picture of you in our lives so that we could see you not just in the Old Testament, not just in the Bible, but in our, working out in our own lives, in our own hearts. Lord, I ask that uh, you help us better understand the Old Testament, so that we won't we don't get deceived um, by this Antichrist who's coming in the last days that you said, Lord, and that uh, we look for you, we keep our eyes fixed on you, and that uh, you find us um, faithful until you come again. Father, we thank you for all that you do for us. Please protect us today and bless those who hear this message with peace, happiness, and, and more wisdom and a better understanding for you, Father. Um, we love you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. Um, I'm going to close with uh, give God the last word. We're going to be in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 if you want to read along. <clears throat> 1 Corinthians chapter 15. The Bible says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, that he was buried and that he rose again the third day, according to the scriptures, and that he was seen of Cephas, then of the twelve. After that, he was seen of, he was seen of above 500 brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain unto this present, but some are fallen asleep. After that, he was seen of James, then of all the apostles, and last of all, he was seen of me also, as of one born out of due time. For I am the least of the apostles, that I am not meet to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace, which was, dispo which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain, but I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God, which was with me. Therefore, whether it were I or they, so we preach, and so you believed. Amen. Amen.